Hello, welcome to another creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate a tree that's blown by wind. All right, so let's start with the input image. This is the input image of the tree. As you can see, the different portions of the tree are laid out on the texture atlas. Here are the leaves, and I've actually gone in and renamed all the different portions. So you can see leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, and so on. And this is the main trunk. Okay, so very simple, nothing exciting, just a bunch of different region meshes. And here is the rig. I'm not going to go into the rig too much here because if you want to learn how to rig in Creature, please watch the previous tutorials, especially the ones covering the rigging portions of Creature. But it's actually really, really simple. It's just putting these different mesh regions together, right? And then constructing the bones, the skeletal portion of the tree. And essentially what it is, is it's just a single chain of bones for the trunk coming down over here. All right. And then you have these individual three chain structures, three chain bone structures coming out for each leaf of the tree. That's really all it is. And these three chain bones are all parented to the base well, not the base, but the, the end of the bone for the trunk, okay? So that, that, that they sway together when the trunk moves, all right? And so to demonstrate, let me show you the test mode. So notice when I actually tilt the tip of the trunk, the other leaves tilt with it, right? And of course, when you drag the handles for the other bones, the, the leaf deforms as well. That's just Auto, auto weighting. I just ran one one round of auto weighting on the bones uh, on the bones on the regions, and that worked. Okay, so that it basically con con concludes the the rigging portion, which is actually not that difficult. It's just a really straightforward rig, nothing really fancy. But again, if you want to learn how to do the rigging, please watch the previous tutorials on rigging in Creature, and then we're going to start animating. Hello. Okay, so now we're going to start animating the tree. That's the exciting part, and that's what we've all been waiting for, I hope. <laughs> now, to start off, I have an empty animation. I call it wind. If I play it, nothing happens. Okay, so we're going to start from here. What are we going to do first? This is a really, really simple animation rig, I promise you, because we're actually just going to use one type of motor. That's the beauty of the creature, pro creature procedural animation system. All right, so I am actually going to go in and first of all, install a bend physics motor on this chain of bones on the trunk. I can basically hold on control and press N and that will walk me up the hierarchy to select all the parent bones for the trunk. Okay, and, that, and then I'm going to go in to say install motor and pick bend physics motor. All right. Okay, and let's do it for the rest of the leaves. So for the leaves, we're going to pick the root bone of each leaf. And this time I want to select all the bones from the current bone here to its children. So I just press Control M, there you go, and then pick Band Physics Motor. And let's do the same for the others. Control M, install Band Physics, Control M, install Band Physics. I guess you can see the pattern here. It's very, very simple. I'm just installing a bunch of Band Physics on every single chain of bones. Okay, now we're done. If we play the animation, let's see what we get. Whoa, a bit crazy. It, it went a bit too frantic at the beginning. That's because the system was slightly unstable at the beginning and then it calmed down. So to fix that, we have to increase the damping of the root trunk, right? Because it, it, it swayed too much and it caused the rest of the physics filters to go a bit crazy. So what we do is we click on one of any of the bones on the trunk Okay, and you see this parameter here called damping. Now damping is the value that determines how quickly the system bleeds energy. In our case, the system didn't bleed energy quick enough, which resulted in that frantic motion at the very beginning. So let's increase the damping to say 20 or let's say 30. Let's see what we get. Right, so much calmer now. And we probably also want the trunk to be a lot stiffer, don't we? So let's increase the stiffness to say 100. And let's make it not stretch that much too. So let's do 100 as well. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we have a relatively stiff trunk. 
And what we should do now is we can go into each individual leaf and start tweaking their damping parameters too, because when the wind blows, we don't want it to freak out too much. So let's up the stiffness for these guys to something more reasonable. We can, tr we can try a range of values. I'm going to try something between 20 and 15 or 10. And you have, you know, you have, if you have a, a varied range of values, it gives more realism to it because each leaf essentially has a different material property. So it's, it, you give it more of a random variation, if you know what I'm talking about. So let's try a couple of these values. OK. All right. So we have this, nothing too exciting yet. So where, where, where's the, where does the wind come in? Well, we move our mouse to the force fields tab. There's no force field. We're going to add a force field. So click on add field and then pick the direction force field motor. OK, now if we play it, let's see what happens. Nothing. Why is that? Well, because the force field motor hasn't been assigned to any of the, the motors, the bone motors we have created just yet. So we're going to select the force field motor and click assigned field. Okay, and we want the force field to affect all the bone motors, all the physics bone motors that we just installed on the tree. So simply just click on select all and close. All right, and let's see what happens now. Okay, <laughs> so immediately you see that the wind is blowing this tree, right? And one thing is uh, we might actually not want the entire trunk to be affected by the wind, right? We only want probably the top parts of the trunk. So let's go back and let's remove the band physics just from the base trunk. So we say remove motor, just the selected bone. Okay. And there you go. So now when I play it, the base trunk is locked into place like it should be and the rest of it is actually blown by the wind. And I already have a kind of wind effect coming along. Now I can tweak values on the force field wind motor to change the direction of the wind. So if I say change the angle to 150 degrees, it should blow in the other way, right? And I can change a lot of things, actually. I can change the, the scaling. I can change the frequency. I can change the scale frequency. So if I reduce that, you know, I get a different look, right? If I increase that, the scale frequency, you get a more frantic behavior. So it all depends on what you're trying to go for over here. Uh, one thing I want to know is maybe this leaf over here was freaking out too much. So in order to fix that, I probably want to increase the stiffness of this leaf when it's under, undergoing really strong wind. So to do that, I'm going to up the damping on him to 30. And I'm going to up the stiffness, say, 100, just to make sure he doesn't freak out too much. So let's see what we get. Well, he's still freaking out a bit more. So what we do is we probably want to reduce the force the size of wind. There is a scale parameter on the wind. It's set to 0.5. If we set it to 0 0.25, for example, you're going to reduce the amount of wind blowing on the tree. And there you go. So now it's a bit more controllable. So essentially what you're seeing here is a system that is very easily tweaked. You can come in and tweak all these different parameters on the wind. You can tweak the angle. You can tweak how, how far out the spread is. The other thing you can tweak is the angle delta. This determines, as you can see, these vectors on the force wind field. This determines how, f what the difference between the, the angular distribution of the wind vectors are. So right now, they're distributed at 30 degrees. I can increase that to, say, 90 degrees, so you're going to get a more varied angle distribution. Right? It's a bit crazier. Or I can reduce it to, say, 10 degrees, for example. And then it's mostly just going to blow in, in one direction, which is the, you know, around plus minus 10 degrees on the set angle you've desired, right? So this gives you a lot of flexibility to play around with a tree that's blown about by wind. And I can also increase the frequency of the overall wind, all right? So now it's, it's more frantic. And again, I can obviously up the scale if I want something stronger than a gust. So now it's, it's much stronger, as you can tell, right? It's actually getting blown this way. And then finally, I think I want to emphasize that every single key value here, or rather every single value here, is keyable over time. So for example, let's say we're, we want the wind to blow at, say, um, 150 degrees for the first, oh, sorry, this one. OK, so that's, let's say we want the wind to blow 150 degrees for the first 45 frames. And then we're going to change direction over another on the 50th frame 
to say 30 degrees. So it's going to change. It's going to be key. It's going to change from 45. The wind is going to change direction and it's going to blow to the other the other side, right? So let's see what happens. There you go, right? So you can you can key these values. You can key the wind fields and it will change the direction in which it blows up entirely up to you. So this is actually a really powerful tool. It's the best combination of keyframe and procedural animation, where you can basically keyframe the actual procedural values and then make it work for you, make it make it direct an intended result. And so this is a prime example of how I'm changing the wind direction over time and the whole system just falls into place. You can obviously key everything else. You can key the angular delta, you can key the frequency, you can key the scale delta and, and whatnot. Everything is at your control. It's a very, very flexible, powerful system, right? Okay, so this basically concludes this wind tree tutorial. It's actually not that difficult, as you can see, to set up a very simple rig that responds to wind. And with just a couple of installation of the physics melters and the direction of wind melter, you actually get a tree that sways in the wind or gets blown by the wind, however you put it. Thanks for watching and happy animating.